know, Arlington Park? Where is it? If, it, if we grant this variance, where? Well, Arlington Park. Yeah, Arlington where is Park that? is down Why? here. Okay, okay. okay. Right. Thank you. This actually faces the softball fields in IGA. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sorry. Yeah, the, the, the big complex is back up to your right. Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong. It, it looks you said that the the, the city setback additional 25 foot step setback is an impervious buffer. Yes. Right? It looks to me on the west side of the creek as though this new sidewalk that will front the new 20 bed house it looks like a good portion of that is going to encroach in that 25 foot buffer also. No, sir. Uh, I was going to say the engineer that designed it is here. Uh, okay. We've spoken about that, and that has, I believe, this is the original. The original does show it right. as much as a foot and a half in, into the buffer, but it has been shifted five feet. Am I correct in saying that? Okay. Okay. My other question is what about crossing the stream with the bridge and the other areas? I mean, technically, you are encroaching into that, and we are crossing state water with that bridge. Is that is that, that, that is approved and that is allowed, right? Uh, yes, sir. It's a perpendicular crossing. Okay. So it is allowed. Okay. And there won't be any uh, structure. It's going to be a clear span right. all the way across. Yes. Okay. There won't be anything entering into the creek or that 25 foot state buffer. Okay. So it'll just be in the air. Yes, it's it'll be arched over. Okay. So to speak. So it'll be air <laughs> So we wouldn't have anything that would go down and go pilings or anything going into the creek that would possibly, you know. The state land will be totally undisturbed. Anything that is disturbed will be on the city side yes. in the extra 25 foot on both sides. Yes, and it will just be a perpendicular across. Okay. Any other questions or discussions? I had a question for the engineer. Okay. Let's we we'll give him up just a second. Any have, other questions? Yeah, one more question. Is there, why are we expanding? Is there a reason? I mean, what's, what's the rationale behind expanding? To accommodate more residents? Or? Oh, they, well, they have a demand for more residents. There's a demand for more residents. So in order to, be, to try to meet that need, that's the reason for the expansion. Okay, Ms. Hobby, you had a question? Tell me again what the purpose is of planting fixed trees and fence roads. Okay, if you look down the eastern side of the stream bank. Up and up. Okay, it's all just grass. Uh, stream banks, the reason for buffers and stuff are to help keep the water temperatures lower uh, and stuff. So the reason for a 25 foot buffer, although this has been cleared years before this has ever Came into effect it is for to have tree lines so that don't get disturbed and the creeks stay cooler so the water temperatures stay lower and more stuff survives and would they the, be allowed to put a fence up like they did on the west side of the creek no. oh, within that buffer no no and, saying a little earlier, a lot of the stuff that has been done on the other side. Uh, there are all kinds of violations according to today's standards. I realize they were grandfathered in. This facility was built 43 years ago. Um, this used to be a natural, regular floating stream as far as it can stay, but decades ago it was generalized and modified to basically a ditch. Um, so it's sort of unusual to be applying stream buffers to a ditch, and that's what we have. And part of the requirements, conditions of approval for the variances, and also the condition of use, is to add some vegetation back to this area that probably should have been there all along. So what they're proposing is actually an improvement of what they currently have. Um, who currently maintains that stream? Maintains Street. all the vegetation within that area and the city, city does that? Yes. Well, the city of Valdosta maintains these new shrubs and trees. Um, yes. 
Um, and because be, on the other side, I don't know how else to put it, it doesn't look pretty and natural. It looks overgrown. It looks and, unsightly. Well, <laughs> just downright unsightly. Well, unfortunately, with our creeks uh -huh. and ditches, uh -huh. uh, most of the time we're only uh, capable of servicing twice a year. But y'all are doing a good, si a good job uh -huh. on the that would be my concern is with the, the choices of the trees and the choices of the shrubs and things like that. Are we that also, are we adding to the burden of the city and the cost of maintaining these things and longevity and everything else? No, sir. Every, one of the things with, and that's why it says approval of the engineering department, is the canopy trees won't be within the state buffer. Okay. They'll be within the city buffer. That way we don't have to worry about necessarily us, but the city. In 25 years, these trees falling over because of the roots being washed out, stuff like that. I, I guess my question is that even though it's technically a city buffer, that city buffer is still within the UHS fluid property, right? That is correct. So it should it should fall to them to maintain? Well, those they will make it, it. They, I was going to say, along with the regular landscaping and stuff, they'll have the irrigation plans and stuff, and that will that will all be maintained by them. Okay. All right. But the actual, the ditch and stuff, the shrubs and the tree, the trees, really no maintenance, uh, except for irrigation. Okay. Any other questions from the board at this time? Thank you very much. Is there anyone else in support of this application? If you would please give the name and address. Matt Phelps, Level Engineering. I'm the civil engineer for the project. My uh, address is 3998 in the My name is Daniel Anderson with UHS Pruitt, uh, 1626 Jurgens Court, Mill Cross, Georgia. I work in planning and development. Okay, there was a question to that needed to be addressed to the engineering. Um, I just had the question. I understand that this is sort of early schematic, diagrammatic things like that. Um, there, there looks like a lot of area that's going to be covered that, that right now is virgin ground. Um, I didn't see anything designated on the plan for stormwater uh, detention, but I understand, like I said, this is early. Can you maybe address that and, and what, what the plans are for stormwater here? Uh, of course. Uh, and Mike said this was very early schematic. We actually didn't have a survey at this time. Uh, between the, the building, the, the 25 foot buffer, uh, the city's buffer, mm -hmm. um, it is an impervious buffer, like Jerry said. In that area, we can put some depressions in there to help with stormwater, um, use that as a nice stormwater maintenance area on both sides of the creek. Um, we're actually on the west side. Um, that building is it's almost an even offset. We're going to be removing parking that's there now, so that's almost an even. Um, so most of our stormwater will be on the east side to accommodate the new building and uh, parking lot. So. But it sounds like what you're planning to do is string it along beside the stream. It'll, there. Yes, sir. It'll okay. be a uh, long linear. Uh, it could even be an underground under the parking lot. Even. So just okay. whatever works best, most economic for the site. Okay. Of course, engineering will be looking over their shoulder for that as well. All right. right. Any other questions? Anyone else in here in support of this application? Is there anyone here in opposition to this request, or is there anyone here that has questions or needs clarification of what is being requested? Any other discussions from staff on this case? I, I have some concerns. Okay. Um, I was in a meeting last night, and at that meeting, uh, somebody asked about stormwater uh, drainage on Lee Street, um, how there's flooding on Lee Street, how the ditches fill up on Lee Street. Um, the, they talked about the retention pond that's sort of diagonal across the street to this um, behind the Coca-Cola plant. Um, we have a real problem with flooding in 
in our community right now, and I have some serious concerns about a building up some more rooftop right next to a stream um, and being right next to the stream. If we have a deluge of water that comes down that creek or ditch, um, it doesn't know that it's supposed to stay within 25 or 50 feet of the ditch. And, and then what kind of problem do we have when the ditch fills up and I'm just really not comfortable building something close to the stream like this, I'm really not. We have asked the same kinds of questions. Um, I have some information about the 43 year history of this segment along the creek. This area of the creek is not the same topography as what's downstream. There's nine feet of elevation between the bottom of the ditch and the top of the bank, and a few more feet higher when you get out of the numbers. There's a big elevation change. I, I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, the Wickham Water Plant, the water wastewater treatment plant used to not be in a floodplain, and now it's underwater. Right. And and other places where water used to not go, it goes now. And and we really need to be sensitive about that. I'm going to assume that between engineering, city of Alabaster, and engineering for the corporation, the, all of those concerns are going to be met as well as possible. They have to be. Any other questions? Any other comments? Can we get a motion on this request? Well, has anybody complained? We've had no response from you. And it's been through planning commission and city council. <coughs> city council is aware of this as they rezone. Correct. And we talked about these same issues with them at their work session. Has it officially been rezoned? Or? It has been rezoned to OP and the commission is granted. Last Thursday night. No stipulations or anything, extra conditions were put on it. There are conditions of approval with the condition of use, similar to what you have here. Well, where are they again? Um, the vegetation along the stream buffer. Okay. And I think Matt's looking to it over there. Um, it was the requirement for maintaining the shared access to this property. This is a professional office, it's on a separate parcel that shared driveway. So that is a requirement. Uh, the vegetation approval is for existing and new facility. I'm trying to remember what else. Uh, I'll just read them to you. Uh, approval shall be granted for residential care facility consisting of both the existing and proposed buildings and other site improvements as depicted on the submitted site plan. Approval shall also be subject to approval by a variance of by zoning board of appeals. Number two, new buildings shall be residential in appearance and compatible in design with the existing buildings. Number three, plant trees and other vegetation within the buffer areas of one mile branch is approved by the city arborist and the city engineer in order to stabilize existing stream banks and reduce potential erosion issues. Number four, maintain shared access driveway with the adjacent existing commercial office. Five conditional use approval when the proposed expansion shall expire after five years from the date of approval if no building permits for the development are requested by that time. So those are the main issues. And that is in this package, isn't it? Oh, oh, I thought no. I was with this. Okay. You've got two conditions, but they're of similar name. I mean, the landscape is and things like that. Okay. But that's, your conditions, that's the council. Correct. Your conditions, as recommended by staff, pertain to these encroachments. Right. But, but where I was going with that, there's no reason for us to put that in our minutes because it's already in city council. Correct. Yeah. Can Matt or Matt show me on the map generally where the uh, where the setback line is in relation to the parking lot. Yeah, and you might be able to see it from the map in your packet. There's two parallel blue lines. There's one right here, which is the state buffer. Okay, and then 
so the outer blue line cuts the corner of the existing building, cuts through these corners, and then kind of hugs the wall of this building. That's the city. Right, the city buffer. The encroachments really are here and here. So when yeah. this building is shifting a little bit, it might kind of get a little close back here. So on the east side, we're really not, we're not really encroaching. Yeah, the encroachment the issues is primarily here. Okay. And there's already impervious material in that area. Correct. This yeah. parking lot comes out. So they're replacing some of the parking lot with rooftop. The parking that's being displaced, which we estimate about 10 spaces or so, is being put over here and then doubled in size to help accommodate this building. This is where the new beds are going. Yes. But now, don't we have a building on the west side of the creek that's a temporary type building that's there because it's being grandfathered in? There was a it's like portable building. building. A portable. That's all being moved. All that section you see when you look over there, all that's getting taken out of there. The actually trailer's not used. They're actually waiting for somebody to pick it up. They donated it. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. There's a pool there also. The pool's coming out. We're putting a brand new gunite pool in there and cleaning all that area up. Kind of like a, you know, swim up type negative down to about a four feet. Redoing that whole section there. Redoing the landscaping. Probably going to re-roof the facility also, you know. We need to, I think we've had it for about three years, so we're going to spend a little money sprucing it up. And in your aerial side thing, you can see the portable building for the top of this part. Any other questions? Any other discussions? I have another question. The building that's the um, cross shaped building, that's the activity center. That building, can it shift further to the north? Well, that is why that's what triggered the other variance. Okay, can it shift further to the north? Yes, I'm here. Probably the building, building set right. If the building, we, we would have to have a variance because it would then encroach into the northern side. Which they're already encroaching 10 feet right. into that setback area. They could encroach a few more feet further and be a few more feet off of the creek. You then get into access concerns with the building. The, these two variances are tied together directly because shifting the building back into the building setback was to alleviate encroachment into the stream body. Mm -hmm. So they're okay, so can directly you do that some more? They could, it's just you need to have access issues around the building and I think they came up with these numbers so that this building would not encroach any further than the existing building already does. Like five feet. And that existing building on the bottom, what's that, what's that building? That's part of their the existing building. That's part of the main building. Been there 43 years. Um, to the north, there will, there will be a transitional buffer, which it will be planted with uh, landscaping and everything. And so, we, if we went any farther back, we would be into that buffer, which um, then we wouldn't be able to have any access out the rear of the building doors and everything. So, our apartment still needs to go around it. Um, do you have your land survey with you? Uh, I don't know if you know elevations or not. I, I do know the elevations, I just don't have What, them. because, I mean. What specific elevation? Well, I mean, flood level doesn't necessarily depend upon distance, it depends upon height difference. Right. Okay. My question would be the, the, the edge of the creek, the defined creek waterway, the top elevation of that, and the, the I guess the lowest elevation of the building. Where we're touching, what what kind of ground, what kind of height difference? I've got all that right here. The top of the bank is elevation 194, consistently along the full length. Okay. The flood zone elevation, 100-year flood zone, uh -huh. is set at 196. Okay. Two feet above that. The existing ground where the new buildings are sitting is 196. So the finished floors will be two feet above that at 198. Okay. And to give you some perspective as far as what the water would be doing, Bolton Street, uh, where the creek crosses under Bolton Street at the south there, the roadway elevation is 195. So we're going to be three feet above the road. So long before any, uh, any existing facility is 197 and three quarter. 
So the road would be submerged by several feet long before any water ever got in on the uh, buildings. Okay. And in the 43 years, they never had a flood there. Okay. Because the roadway actually acts as a relief point several feet before the water ever gets to it. And this is a nine foot deep channel. Yes, Ms. Bobby? How did they determine that they had to have a 9,000 square foot building? Could it have been 8,220 square foot? The activity center? Mm -hmm, the activity center. I think with these type of facilities, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's certain um, regulations. regulations with the state about what sort of um, things have to be in the buildings as far as the facility is, certain, certain size of the classrooms or um, I can't remember what all was in the building. There's activity center in there. It's more like a miniature uh, small gym, gymnasium that can be broken into classrooms and stuff like that. So the state requirements are that it has to be a minimum of 9,000 No, ma'am, I'm not sure about that. The actual building, the residence building, yes, there is a size for that activity center. I'm not exactly sure on that size. So there is a possibility that it could be cut down. There probably is a possibility, correct. I have to ask the architect and he has to lead a review of the state actual architect. That's who signs off on our plans. Any other questions? Will we entertain a motion on this request? Motion on the floor from Dr. Howell to approve the request.